This is the story of Iberia Flight 1456. On the 7th of February 2001, an Iberia A320 was flying from Barcelona to Bilbao in Spain. The sun had set. Visibility at Bilbao sat at 10 kilometers or 6 miles. It was a windy night. There was a 10 knot wind coming in from the southwest and it was gusting up to 25 knots. Despite that, the flight had more or less been normal since takeoff from Barcelona almost an hour ago. The first officer was the one flying, and the captain monitored the instruments. As they flew over Pamplona at 15,000 feet, they encountered a bit of turbulence. The weather was giving them a taste of what it had in store for them. The choppy weather continued. When they were 25 nautical miles from Bilbao, they flew through some clouds, experiencing some heavy turbulence. On their way down, they experienced winds of up to 55 knots. Bilbao Tower cleared them to land on runway 30. They were in VMC conditions, and the winds were at 8 knots, gusting to 15, coming in from 240 degrees. With the flaps and the approach speed set, they continued their approach. At 400 feet, the pilots disengaged the autopilot and began flying the plane manually. All was normal, but things started to go wrong a few seconds before landing. Their vertical speed spiked. Suddenly, their plane was descending at 1,200 feet per minute. In the cockpit, the sink rate warning sounded. They needed to go around, and the captain selected Togo Power, commanding full power from the engines, and they pulled back on their respective side sticks to arrest their descent and to start the go-around, but their side stick inputs had no effect on the plane. With no response from the plane, and with them so low to the ground, the plane touched down hard on the runway in a slight nose-down attitude. Once on the ground, the captain decided to continue the landing, but the nose gear collapsed and four tires of the main landing gear blew out. The plane went down runway 30, dragging its nose and the engine nacelles down the runway. The plane eventually came to a stop on the runway, angled 60 degrees from the center line. Once they were at a standstill, the captain commanded an evacuation. During the evacuation, one crew member and 24 passengers were injured, one of which was serious. All 143 people on the plane survived their rough landing. The flight data recorder gave the investigators a treasure trove of data. The mountains nearby produced strong winds and this was a feature of the region and they are known to jostle the planes around as they flew into Bilbao. This flight was no exception. They found strong winds of up to 55 knots below 6,000 feet. The problem started when they were seconds from touching down. When they were at 200 feet, the first signs of trouble showed up. They encountered a tailwind. Then, when they hit 100 feet, they encountered an updraft that pushed the plane up at 1.15 g. The angle of attack at this point was 10 degrees. Then, in the 5 seconds before touchdown, they encountered a descending draft, which brought down the angle of attack, which was followed up by an updraft and a tailwind. As all of this happened, the pilots reacted as you'd expect them to. When in the updraft, he pushed the side stick forward, and when in the downdraft, they pulled back on the side sticks. Both pilots were making inputs on their respective side sticks. Unless priority is assigned, the computer will calculate the net result of the maneuvers requested by both side sticks, and then the computer will carry that out. In this case, priority was not assigned. Before we go any further, let's just talk a bit about these terms and some other stuff about the A320 so that the rest of the video will make sense. So, what is AOA or angle of attack? Basically, in very simple terms, it's the angle between the wing and the wind. Well, really, it's the angle between the cord line and the vector of the relative motion of the fluid, but that definition is too complex for our needs. The A320 monitors the AOA parameter constantly to check if the plane is about to stall out. If the angle of attack is too high, the wing won't be producing any lift. To be safe, the AOA needs to be a safe value. Let's call this alpha protection, and the computer never lets the plane exceed a threshold called alpha max. If the plane thinks that the AOA could get too high, it enables AOA protections. When these protections are enabled, the plane will take the side stick inputs and convert them so that the plane stays between alpha protection and alpha max. When the protections aren't active, the computers command the elevator deflections that the pilot asks for with the side stick. 
high AOA values are sometimes accompanied by something known as fugoid movements. It's when the plane goes up and down like a roller coaster, but the angle of attack stays the same. The computers are programmed to dampen these oscillations out by pitching the plane up and down as necessary. So how does the plane do all of this? With math, of course. Now, there's some math ahead, but don't worry, I'll keep it short to spare you any traumatic high school flashbacks. The plane calculates the anticipated AOA with this formula. The anticipated AOA can be obtained by adding the AOA right now with the product of the derivative of the alpha function with respect to time and f. f is a value that represents the position of the side stick. f will be 1 when the side stick angle is greater than 10 degrees and it will be 0 when the side stick angle is less than 5 degrees. And for angles between 5 and 10, f moves between 0 and 1. So basically, if the pilot is pulling back on the stick, this section will be a positive number and that gets added to the current AOA and so you get the future AOA. And that's it, the math is done, hopefully that made sense. On that night, when they were coming in to land at Bilbao, they were being pummeled by strong winds. Their AOA was all over the place. When they were near the runway, they pulled back on their stick to keep the plane on glide. Their AOA at this point was quite high, 10 degrees, and the alpha max for the plane in this configuration was 15 degrees. Now think back to that math equation. The pilots are pulling back on the stick hard and the computer sees that the projected AOA is very high and so it enables the AOA protections. The AOA protections stay on. To disengage the protections, you have to stop pulling back on the side stick and the pilots did not do that because that is counterintuitive. You're about to hit the ground and you need your plane to climb out. Easing up on the stick is the last thing that you do. Now the computer thinks that the plane is about to stall out, so it won't let the plane exceed alpha max and the pitch stays the same. So let's just do a quick recap before we continue. The winds around the airport gave the plane a high AOA value. To keep the plane on glide, through the strong winds, the pilots pull back on the stick. The flight computer used the side stick position to calculate the expected AOA. The value that the computer comes to is high, and thinking that the plane is in danger, the computer enabled AOA protections. This meant that the computer would move the elevators in such a way so that the AOA doesn't increase to an unsafe value. That is, the computer won't let you pitch the plane up by much, if at all. Still with me? Let's continue. This is when fate kicked the crew when they were down. Remember all of that stuff about fugoid movement? When the AOA is quite high, oscillations can occur and the computer is programmed to dampen those out? Here's how that programming works. When the airspeed drops, it pitches the nose down. That makes sense. If you're oscillating, that would stabilize your plane. But as flight 1456 is about to touch down, they're hit with a tailwind and the airspeed drops. The computer does as it's programmed to and pitches the nose down to counter the expected fugoid movement. But they're right above the runway and this sends the plane right into the runway in a slight nose down orientation. The FDR recorded g-forces of up to 4.75 g during the touchdown. The winds played a crucial part in this crash. Winds blowing perpendicularly against a mountain can cause strong winds like these. Bilbao Airport at that time did not have wind shear detection equipment. Had turbulence occurred at a higher altitude, the plane itself, using its alpha floor mechanisms, would have commanded a go-around. Had the plane been in the flap 3 configuration, the AOA system may not have activated. Also, if both pilots had not pulled back on the stick at the same time, there's a chance that the AOA protections would not have kicked in. When it comes to automation, this is what you need the plane to do in any other phase of flight. It could very well save the plane, but this sort of behavior so close to the ground can be disastrous as flight 1456 has shown. Airbus was instructed to rewrite the code and with that it was made so that the AOA protections would not be inadvertently triggered by heavy winds when the plane was so low to the ground. By September of 2001, an airworthiness directive was put out asking this fix to be applied on A319s, A320s, and A321s. Emphasis was put on understanding the winds in and around Bilbao. Pilots of Iberia were told about the issues of dual input. 
they were told to use the priority button so that one person has control. It never ceases to amaze me all the things that can go wrong. In the case of flight 1456, it was the winds. Winds hit the plane in just the right way to cause this crash. But it's good to see that we've learned from our mistakes. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe.